So we're going to go through today a calf strengthening protocol. So we're going to go through body weight exercises. We chatted about it on the Physio Plus Fitness podcast the other day, uh, me and Glenn. So if you haven't checked that out, I'll put a link in the description of the video for you to listen to the podcast. Hello, mate. How's it hey, going? Hey, Chris. Good. Very good. Good to be here going through our um, calf loading protocols. The, the key, the beauty of this kind of protocol is it's linked to your body weight. So if you're a 50 kilo runner versus a 100 kilo rugby player, then you'll get an idea of what sort of targets they should hit according to their body size and, and type of sport as well. So it, mo it modifies with the athlete that we use it for. Any lower limb injury, I think the calf is a muscle that's under, underrated, undervalued. Okay, so what's the first step, calf strengthening, calf training wise, mate? They need to pass some criteria first, yeah? So we wouldn't just get them in the gym and load them up with huge amounts of weight. Um, starting point, always body weight, yeah? So if they're really starting from scratch, then just from a flat surface, uh, bilateral heel raises, build them up to a point of four times 15. Once they can tolerate that, we move them onto single leg. Yep. Again, coming up to four times 15. Once they can tolerate that, we get them onto the step. Yeah, so now we're putting them into a point of increased dorsiflexion. Four times 15. And then once they've got to grips with that, it's nice to start to introduce a little bit of variation in speed and a little bit of variation in angle. So uh, my go-to protocol before we start um, loading them up a bit heavier is that they can do four 15s. First set with a straight knee, nice and slow, nice and controlled. Second set with a straight knee, but with a bit more speed and power. Third set with a bent knee. So again, we're trying to bias the soleus somewhat. Nice and slow, nice and controlled. And then a fourth set with a bent knee, Again, a little bit more speed and power. So especially with the calf, I like to mix up the speed, mix up the angles, and once they're happy and competent there and they can do that without excessive fatigue or pain, then we can start to add on some more external load. So this is what we call the step riser. We've got our setup here, so you can see standard gym setup. This could be a squat rack in any commercial gym or it could be a Smith machine as well. We've popped a step down here, you can have it slightly higher. Um, as long as we can rest our front foot on there. We've got our normal bar set up as if we were uh, doing a barbell squat. A step behind, take the weight. And then the important thing here is that I'm not just leaning forwards onto my front leg and shifting the weight. Yeah, so a lot of people will end up just shifting the weight, leaning forwards. You rest your weight through your front leg, but you drive off the back leg. So it's the back foot, it's the rear foot that we're using as our um, training leg. So we're in our kind of athletic running pose. We're pushing off through the big toe and the second toe and we're driving up off the back leg. And in terms of reps and sets for that? So obviously we're warming up here with the bar. Um, as we add more weight, again, it depends on the body weight. So our goal, our training goal is anywhere between 1.2 to 1.5 times body weight. So if you was a, just for, simplicity of maths which is a 100 kilo guy um, you'd be aiming for 120 to 150 kilo um, working uh, weight on this um, usually aiming for around five to eight reps on that and three to four sets okay cool okay so second exercise what we got so now we've got our um, loaded seated calf raise so obviously this is hitting more the soleus muscle complex um, same goals as before so depending on the sport depending on the athlete the end goal is 1.2 to 1.5 body weight on one leg. So it's quite a challenging goal, takes a bit of time to get there. The setup is where the athletes struggle the most. So um, we've got it set up for you here on our kind of squat rack. Now, I'm not a big fan of Smith machines, but the Smith machine is a good, good option for this as well, because you can move it up and down, it's quite nice to um, get underneath it. I've got a plate on here just to give me a little bit more dorsiflexion on the ankle. I've got my bench here that I'm sitting on. I've got my bar, so from here, I can kind of shimmy my knee under. And again, when you start adding more weight, you're gonna need some cushion or a towel under there. Um, I can get my toe into place. I can lift the weight. And now from here, we've got our seated calf raise. And you're going up as high as you can with the calf raise? Going or? into maximum plant flexion. And again, the plate's really nice for that, for bringing you into a, a starting point of uh, maximum dorsiflexion or close to it. Yeah, perfect. Okay, so 
In terms of more sports specific stuff, so we've done our calf strengthening, we've you know built up the load a little bit. So we're going to talk, I think, a little bit about the prowler now, Nick. Yeah, so the, the sled, the prowler, um, a great tool for when we're starting to uh, transition a bit of our strength that we've built up into speed. The starting point, we normally aim a little bit heavier. Yeah, so the reason for that is it's going to slow us down. So we've already built our base of strength, we've hit our goals or we're thereabouts. Um, so we can start to work on you know, um, grooving that into a uh, forward running motion, um, but we're going to slow it down with the weight. And then the progression would be actually taking weight off mm -hmm. and then increasing the speed. Okay, cool. Yeah, so we've got, like I say, we've got a reasonable amount of weight here. We're just going to push. And you can see as I'm pushing through, it's predominantly my calves that I'm working here. So with this kind of length run, we do four runs up and down, up and down. That would be one round and then we would rest. We can either superset that with a, a, another exercise, a kettlebell swing or a med ball slam or something like that to get the heart rate up. Um, and we might do three or four rounds of that. And then the progression, obviously, if we want to get more speed, is we're actually taking the weight off. And this is the same with post-ops as well. We actually start you know, reasonably heavy to keep the slow the speed um, in place. And then when we want to progress and we end up ditching the weight off and this is the sort of time we'd bring in plyometrics as well plyos are fundamentally a late stage rehab um, exercise but we can start them in a graded way earlier on um, a really nice way to bring them on early is to do them in water so to do them in the pool so any of these exercises that we show now you can do at an earlier stage in kind of chest high water progress it to waist high water and down to knee high water if they've got access to that we do want them to have a, a decent base of strength yeah so we we'll go through a couple of progressions and also we'll talk about prescription of plyometrics so we um, would normally program it at the start of a session after they've warmed up because it tends to be the most taxing exercise on the CNS central nervous system we don't set plyometrics necessarily as sets and, and reps we do it more on contacts so a nice entry point for an athlete uh, in their first plyometric session might be 60 contacts in total uh, we could do two to four exercises depending on um, what we decide and um, we're looking at how they're landing as well. We're looking at that kind of contact time on the ground. So I'll show you a, um, a double leg hop. So here we're kind of just gently trying to have as little contact with the ground as we can. Um, nice cues, jumping on hot coals, jumping on thin ice, really trying to get that contact time as little as we can. The skipping rope is one of my favorite um, adjuncts for plyometrics because you, you can't cheat, you can't lie. So I could start a plyometric routine and have really hard impact. I'm not developing that springy kind of um, skill that we're looking for. And um, you could argue how much benefit you're having with that. We can add in, again, some these kind of exercises where we're adding a little bit more load now because we're splitting the weight between the two legs. And then a, a progression from here would be onto single leg. So again, same sort of thing, minimal contact, lots of speed. And then the progression with a skipping rope would be two legs. Yeah, we can have high knees and then we can do the double taps. So there's lots of progressions that you can bring in. Obviously with the skipping, we would change it. We'd do it for time rather than contacts because they can't think about that while they're skipping. But nice ways that you can introduce plyometrics into your routine. I think it's essential if you're rehabbing any calf or Achilles injuries at some point. So really enjoyed that video, really enjoyed being back filming with Glenn, haven't done it for a while. If anyone's OG, then you'll uh, recognize Glenn from all of our videos that we used to do. So hopefully you've got a really good idea of calf training, right from endurance level to strength level, and then building that into more sports specific plyometrics. Guaranteed if you go through this protocol, use the body weight goals we've set, um, they're going to get stronger, they're going to get more able, and they're going to get back to their sport pain free. So we'll definitely be doing more videos like this, looking at rehab, looking at how you can get better um, and if you enjoyed this video then just check this one out here because I know you'll enjoy this one too.